Hey, Ross. Hey, Kevin. More detectors you got here? What are we talking about? Talking about carbon monoxide, we especially low-level carbon monoxide. Oh, okay. I was going to say we have talked about carbon monoxide before. Right. So, right. Low, all right. So, what do you mean low-level? Right. Carbon monoxide comes when you burn stuff, right? So, fossil fuels, oil, gas, propane, wood. And when you burn things like that, carbon monoxide is one of the byproducts of combustion. And we have combustion in our houses in a whole bunch of different places, whether it's the furnace in the basement or the gas stove or, I guess, even our fireplace. That's right. So, when those don't burn right, we introduce carbon monoxide. If they don't vent to the outside, they come back into the building. Right. Okay. So, the first line of defense is your UL rated carbon monoxide alarms. These oh, are them right here. You see them on the ceilings. Yeah. Right? And they are there to give you life safety, meaning that if they beep, you need to call 911, you need to get out. Right? right? They're basically code, right? I mean, I have to have these or should have these in my house. They're code for required. good reason. Exactly right. Yep. And they have to be specific areas around the house. Very, very important, right? The other thing that people don't realize, though, is that they have thresholds that they have to meet to be UL rated. Okay? So 70 parts per million for up to four hours is where the first tier that this thing will alert you at. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. You're telling me that it's it's not just the amount of carbon monoxide in the building, but it's got to be there for four hours? That's right. So this thing won't go part. off until four hours is passed? Right. At 70 parts per million. Exactly, right? So it's concentration no in time, and a lot of people don't realize that. If it goes to 150 parts per million, it will have to be there for up to 50 minutes before it alerts you. And the same oh. thing when it goes to 400 parts per million, it's 15 minutes, right? So it's there to make sure that it alerts you properly so that you don't die. But if this isn't going off, it doesn't necessarily mean I don't have carbon monoxide in my building? Right. It's crazy, right? You could be at 20 parts per million forever, and it would never, never go off. Well, now house. I have a headache. Okay. Right. So that's what these things do? So these are low-level carbon monoxide monitors. So these monitor the carbon monoxide, and they measure all the way down to five parts per million. Mm. Okay? And they give you a continuous readout. You can see it's zero right now. Of course, if we had carbon monoxide, that level would, would increase and it would tell you what it is real time. So that's actually really good to know because, as you say, it will tell me if I have it mm -hmm. and it will tell me at what levels. At what levels, exactly. Will and it alarm? And it will alarm. It will start off with a visual alert and then it will go to an audio alert. It will beep. At what level? Or do I set that? So it depends on the manufacturer. Yeah. So some of them start at 10, 15, and up to 30. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So wh why is it so bad for us? Like, what actually is going on? Because, I, you know, you guys have described carbon monoxide as odorless tasteless, you can't see it. That's right. <laughs> it's pretty insidious. That's right. Um, That's right. But what is it doing to us? This makes us sick. So yeah, so when you have carbon monoxide in your building and you breathe it in, right, your red blood cells will go after the carbon monoxide versus the oxygen. So you're actually replacing oxygen in your, in your red blood cells with carbon monoxide. Mm. So you are slowly increasing the carbon monoxide of your red blood cells over time. And then it starts off with, you know, headaches, fatigue, and then it can increase all the way to nausea and flu-like symptoms, and then eventually, obviously, you can get into death. Right. right. We about before. You're, you're basically suffocating, essentially, from the inside out. Exactly right. Oof. Yep. Yeah, so very scary. All right. For so sure. just a little bit of pushback. If you're yep. telling me that there's a device on the market, and it's UL rated, mm -hmm. and it has to be in our houses per code or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's not going to alarm until we get 70 parts per million for four, four hours. hours. That's right. Yep. That suggests to me that levels below that aren't something that I should be worried about. Otherwise, these guys would be changing the rules. That's right. Why do I care if it's 20 parts per million? Well, there are multiple studies that have been released that talk about how at risk you are at different levels, right? And so depending on if you're an infant, pregnant, you know, uh, an elderly person, Im immunocompromised, different levels of CO are going to affect you differently, so right? vulnerable populations are going to be affected. I get it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And so if you look at some of the EPA and some of the other standards that are out there, like OSHA, for example, basically has an eight-hour time uh, average of 35. So if you're indoors for up to eight hours, you should never see more than 35 parts per million. That's, of well, course, that's... half. And, and so if I'm a perfectly healthy person, is there a level that I'm comfortable with, or? I mean, me personally, I, zero is where I'm trying well, to be at. Well, look at you, man. <laughs> just, just look at you. Zero, zero. You're a zero PPM kind of guy. I'm just not happy with CO in my, spa in my space. In any, in any house, in any indoor environment, right, we don't want carbon monoxide. There's a reason why it's called the silent killer, right? And even at low-level amounts, it's still going to affect us in a negative way. It's persuasive um, when I hear that these don't tell me if it's there and those tell me if it is there. So right. how much and where do I put them? <laughs> yeah, so $100 to $200 for the price point. And then on top of that, location, you know, what we would recommend, where do you spend the most money of your time? It's in the bedroom. 
right? That's where we're most vulnerable. So eight hours a day in the bedroom, that's the first place. If I could pick one location, it's going to be the bed or near the group of bedrooms in your house. Right. If I could take it a step further, depending on the size of the house, maybe one of the basement, maybe one of the first floor as well, depending where you have other carbon monoxide generating devices like yeah. fireplaces, furnaces, boilers, et cetera. Cool. Yeah. Listen, I thought we were done talking about uh, carbon monoxide, but lots more to learn. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.